on the internet. With most of the attacks happening in the parking lots, many are concerned about visiting the malls now. These concerns have led rise to one man starting a petition to get the authorities to take more action. Mara actually stands for Malaysians Against Rape, Assault and Snatch. So it's M-A-R-A, the H is from the end of Snatch. It's basically the feelings uh, of frustration and anger that we have against all the cases of crime that are going on. Worried about his female family members and colleagues, Dave decided he didn't want any of them to end up as a victim and took action. Basically, uh, I got tired of reading in the press that uh, there's one case after another case of uh, females getting marked, getting uh, abducted, uh, getting robbed in car parks, and uh, decided to do something about it. Mara was founded by Dave on the 1st of July. And within 30 days, he received an overwhelming response with over 10,000 signatures and 4,000 followers on their Facebook page. The petition is basically a citizen's initiative. Mara is strictly non-political, non-religious, colorblind, anybody can join. What we want to do is engage the government, engage the police, engage PDRM, feedback to them on what the public feels like on the cases that are happening currently, give suggestions, and hopefully work together with them to look for quick solutions. Despite the overwhelming response to Dave's positive actions, there are also challenges he has had to face. Um, the challenges basically are the fact that people actually question our motives. People accuse us of being uh, politically motivated, having an agenda. But we put up with it because we feel that at the end of the day, the end result is worth all the effort. There has been some early success as the government has started to listen to him. We've been invited by uh, Pamandu to follow them together with PDRM and with KDN to go on the uh, shopping mall car parks, uh, which is a very positive step. We've also given them a four-page statement uh, containing suggestions and ideas from our members on how safety can be improved. And they've cooperated, they've accepted, and they're working together with us. Among the changes Mara is fighting for is a specific law against snatch theft, as he believes once caught, they are released on bail to commit crimes again. First thing they do, they snatch because they need to pay legal fees. So Mara wants to lobby for a special law dedicated on snatch theft with whipping as a deterrent. We visited the Curve shopping mall to find out what steps shopping malls have taken to beef up their security. Kuru, their head of security, took us on a tour of their mall to show us the changes they have made to make it safer for shoppers. He 
he pointed out the signboards warning shoppers not to leave their personal belongings unattended, an easy target for thieves. When we walk, uh, we don't uh, put our handphones um, on the side of our handbags, or when we go shopping around, we don't leave our valuables unattended. Because these are all opportunities that you give to the culprits to, to steal your valuables. Hanging your bag off the back of your chair is never a good idea. If somebody were to come to distract your attention, it only takes less than 30 seconds, only 10 seconds. They say, excuse me sir, can you show me the direction? And then those photos are, are looking at a different direction. The suspect will just come and just flip the back and they are very, very fast. They are very fast. So we have to be aware. Do not leave your hand and that's hanging from behind the chest. No matter how safe your surroundings, always be alert. When you are walking, please be aware of your surroundings and don't be too engrossed on your handphone. With all this technology we have nowadays, iPads and you know, even uh, headphones and whatnot, some, sometimes we tend to listen to the song or listen to uh, music or we are so engrossed with the uh, latest uh, uh, messages from our friends that we are unaware of our surroundings and that gives rise to opportunity for the theft to take place. Yeah. shopping centres and parking areas, new security measures have been taken. Behind the seven vehicles may be subject to visual screening upon entry and exit. And we are, like, again I say, we are very happy that many of the shoppers here, they cooperate with us and they follow what the guards ask them to do. Guards have also been placed at various locations to make them more visible, especially at the entrance and exits. In every entrance, we have a guard to screen vehicles coming in, and the guards are using a baton. Uh, the officers also use a baton, flickering light, to let the customers know that they are there, and also their bags are very visible. It is a multi-function baton and can be used as a weapon. It's very hard. Fashion Basin also serves as a deterrent to criminals as they let them know a guard is nearby. Uh, we have segregated this. Motorcycles are not allowed in other parts of the malls. Whenever a motorcycle is come down, they are supposed to they are required to take off their helmets and the security guard here, which is 24 hours, they will control the barrier that the motorcycles are to allow to come in. After they are taken off the after they have taken off their helmet, only will they be allowed to enter the motorcycle uh, parking bay. At the same time we have our cameras, you can see we have our cameras and we have our cameras here. With this measure, there is less chance of a snatch theft on a motorcycle roaming around in the basement parking. Also, with the CCTV capturing the faces of all their motorcyclists, they hope this will deter snatch thieves. all these efforts to secure the parking area, some shoppers make themselves easy targets. When the number of shoppers who do not secure their car, there are so many of them who leave their valuables in the cars. Every month I have easily about 100 old cars uh, which are not secure. Some even leave their keys in the, in the ignition. Can you imagine? Uh, these are facts and statistics to prove this. In the CCTV control room, guards monitor all cameras for suspicious behavior. The guards have been trained to ask questions, to ask them, say, sir, can I help you? Uh, to make eye contact with them, that's very important. To let them know that the guards are available there and the guards have noticed them, yes, are watching them. So this will deter them if they are, if they are criminally minded. Pictures of suspects in previous incidents are also kept so that guards can look out for them. 
and we also have a list of the suspect cases from for other shopping malls. We are in close contact with other shopping malls, so that when we have a, a suspect, we pass to one another. Because uh, a suspect thief in one mall today may go to another mall tomorrow. With all these security measures in place, some still think it's still not enough for female shoppers and they must be escorted to their cars. I definitely, there's no other choice. That's just really dangerous. How many years is this? Well, every day you see on Facebook and the papers that there's some, um, you know, robbery or uh, or so on and so forth happening at some mall somewhere. And it's happened in almost every mall that we, major mall that we have in the country. So it is very dangerous, and it's happening more rapidly now than it did in the past. Some shoppers don't take calls when walking to their cars at all. I I wait so I get to the safety of my car before getting a call. For such shoppers that want to be escorted to their cars, a buggy service is provided in the car park area. This buggy service is for any shoppers who request for assistance, especially those who are elderly or those who are uh, carry a lot of shopping bags or even those who cannot find their car sometimes they are uh, in such a big shopping mall they are not able to find their car so we assist them in this manner. Female guards can also be easily seen in the mall. You can request for female security guards and uh, to escort you to the basement car park. Guards are also properly screened. All our guards are well trained and they are in house and we do security wet things for them. We check them and also randomly we do a urine test as well as a blood test for them to ensure that they are drug free. On top of that, we also check the backgrounds of all the security guards before we employ them. Because we have a the positive changes made by the shopping malls has gone unnoticed by the shoppers. The car park is, is usually well lit and there are security guards. So it's, it usually feels like there, there is someone on hand in case I need anything. <laughs> The biggest fear of any shopping mall visitor now is getting attacked in the parking area. But the malls are fighting back and beefing up security. So can this happen again? Shopping center. Well, the Tama is quite safe, but not really daring to go during late nights. It's not really safe because people will get robbed or anything. I'm okay when I come here because I got a lot of friends following me and I don't feel scared or don't dare. Because by night, of course, because my mom don't let me to came out night. Trying to change that perception is Santa Singh, the head of the security operations here. While there have been some cases, he believes his team of guards have been effective in fighting crime here. There is the action in our car park where one lady uh, uh, was snatched. So we, we also caught the sna uh, snatch thief and also we recovered back the chain. And we, we detained the smash thief and we hand it over to the police. Monotama currently has three dogs that patrol the car parks and surrounding areas as a deterrent for potential criminals. And this is one of our K9, Rock Weather, and it's a trained dog 
and our handler also is a train handler. Uh, so the operations in the mall is they will uh, take care of our open car park and our uh, basement, uh, holding basement and also our car park inside our mall. Besides these canines on patrol, they also have a buggy service here too. Car park export uh, service counter. Uh, when anybody requests any assistance from our uh, security to escort them, we will not do. These guards are also trained to respond to any kind of distress. Our uh, guards are all trained uh, to respond to any whistle, alarm, horning. So anybody shouting for help and shout for what they got to and other things. Huh? So I will try around, see what they, how they perform. Within a matter of seconds of Santa blowing the whistle, two guards run towards him and one on a motorbike a few minutes later. of interest in self-defense classes now and one self-defense expert has decided to offer free classes for ladies. Uh, three weekend course which means that it's going to be every Saturday uh, at 10 a.m. Uh, people can register online. It's currently only open to women or adults and what the course covers is um, material to help educate and empower women on how to avoid being the next victim. asked Vince, what are some of the basic steps we can take to protect ourselves? The easiest thing um, in terms of physical physical reaction, um, but the emotional difficulty would be for women to downsize the, you know, the handbag. That's the main thing. Um, the larger the handbag, the more branded the handbag, um, the bigger the target you present. Inside the bag, carry only what you're prepared to use. In terms of any kind of weapon, uh, armed, edge weapon or firearm attacks, it, the simplest thing is just to comply. And it depends on whether the, you, have, you, can, you have to make a decision, whether or not you can determine whether the person wants your possessions or that they want you. So if they want your possessions, it's simply just give it to them, comply. Your, your possessions, if you follow the course, you can replace those things because you prepare to lose them anyway. Um, and also make eye contact with strangers because making eye contact is, is very primal um, because that simple the simple um, gesture alerts people that you are paying attention you're paying attention to them and and typically this can deflect a lot of uh, unwanted attention because you can just see them and they can see you seeing them. are driven by motive, desire and opportunity. As potential victims, we can reduce that opportunity. Crime happens as a matter of opportunity. Somebody is distracted, scrabbling in their handbag for their car key, on the handphone, texting, that's when crime happens. In the end, Dave believes everyone has to play their part to make Malaysia a safer place. Malaysians are very good at complaining. The, the cops are not doing their job, the government is bad, blah blah blah, blah blah blah. But have we looked in the mirror? Are we doing our part? Do we help when somebody is injured or being robbed or being threatened in any way? The case has been had. Where the lady, the poor lady, 16 years old, cracked, fell, lying on, on the street. Seven people walked past. Nobody helped. She lay there for seven minutes. And then you had three guys carrying her to the side of the road. She died in the afternoon. So please, sign the petition. Help yourself.